Hey everybody, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the show. You know what, forget the opener, it's episode 100. 100 episodes, it's nuts. Mind blowing that this has been going this long and you guys are awesome because you still keep putting some crazy good questions down in the comment section below, which is amazing. I figured after 20, 30, 30 even 40 shows, there wouldn't be any decent questions left, but you guys always surprise me with some fantastic ones each and every week, and I don't see an end in sight for this for quite a while. So from me to you, I'm humbly, humbly thanking you all for an amazing 100 episodes. Here's to the next 100 here. It's been two years and running doing this show. So awesome. So uh, one quick thing before, actually two quick things before we get into the questions. First off, if you wanna get your question on the show, it's super simple. Put it in the comment section below, vote up your favorites, and it'll get on the next show. I do read each and every one through that week. So when it gets about Saturday when I record the show, I read everything up to about Saturday or Sunday, and then I still go back to old ones too. So I do read every single question that you guys put in there. So uh, make sure to put them in there, be persistent, because they pop up uh, each and every show. And remember, vote up your favorites, because the ones that get a lot of votes will have a better chance of getting the show, but I do look at the good questions. Also, a couple events coming up, and I wanna tell you about it. First one, right up this week, at the end of this week, on the 9th, I'm gonna be at Fox Airsoft at their field in Parker, Colorado, doing a crazy fun afternoon, actually morning and afternoon, of Airsoft with the guys there. We're gonna have a fun game, we'll be hanging out. I'll probably get out and play a little bit with you guys, maybe switch sides a little bit up and have a blast. So if you guys are in Colorado, pretty much anywhere, hop in the car, or anywhere neighboring, just drive to Parker, Colorado. It's outside of Denver and come visit me there. It is going to be so much fun. Also on the heels of that, I'll be at High Grant Airsoft the next weekend and we'll get into more of that next week as well as I'm doing Airsoft GI's BB Wars Airsoftology game at the end of the month on the 30th and the 31st at GamePod in Antioch, California. So if you guys are in any of those areas, I would love to come meet you. I want to meet you guys in person because that's the best part. I really enjoy hanging out with you. Uh, so definitely want to see you there. But this week, it's Parker, Colorado. So enough of uh, the announcements, the cool stuff that's going on and where I'm going to be. Let's dive on into this big 100th episode Mail call from Palco. Patrick L. writes, greetings, Mr. Jonathan. I have a stock first generation Tokyo Marui M4 A1 AUG. It was chromed at 270 feet per second. Do you think it's good enough to use for indoor play and CQB? Absolutely. Actually, if you're doing indoor and CQB, the engagement distance, the meaning how far you're gonna be shooting your opponents, isn't that far. You're talking like 50 feet. Maybe if there's like real open lanes you can shoot across the field, 100 feet. 270 feet per second is way more than enough power to get out there and compete. In fact, you're gonna have a great Great time at that power level. Now, if you're gonna be playing outdoor and your engagement distances get beyond that, like 100 to 150 feet out that direction, you might want to consider tuning it up a bit. But at that level, at that 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 short distance of CQB, you're not gonna have any disadvantage at all. So I say, man, get out the old Marui, run it. In fact, their hop-ups on the Marui is so good, you're not gonna have any problem popping that little shoulder when somebody tucks out of a corner and knocking them down at 50 feet. Liam McDonald writes, hey Jonathan, I'm going to a mill soon and I can't afford NVGs, but the enemy players can. How can I survive night ops? Just don't play. No, I'm kidding, I'm actually joking there. Uh, you'd be surprised how effective you can be without night vision. But that said, when you say the enemy players can and you can't, let's just say there's it's 50 on 50, right? 5% of the opposing team, maybe 10% if they've got a lot of money, access to a lot of money, will have night vision. That means there's still a lot of players on the other team that won't. They're gonna have the same disadvantage or same advantages as you will. So first off, the human eye is actually remarkably good in low light. So let it adapt, let it get dark, let your eyes adjust and all that, and try not to use your flashlight that much. Believe it or not, flashlight of course will mess up that night vision and kind of uh, your natural night vision. Uh, but you can use a flashlight against your opponents. There's some tactics around that too. If you know they're night vision but the other thing I would say do is make sure to try to stick with somebody who does have night vision and try to see if they have a laser as well because they can use it to point out the enemies Boom, shine it over there green laser red laser whatever enemies are in that area you may not be able to see them but they can at least spot them and so you guys can just waylay them with a ton of firepower also remember night vision isn't perfect it does help a lot don't get me wrong I have a set of uh, gen 3 PBS 14s they help significantly but Shadows and camouflage still work in night. So those are all kind of some tips that I found just playing with Night Vision Airsoft to really give you an advantage so you compete against somebody who does have it. Jester writes, what do you think of suicide vests in Milsim? Okay, in modern times, this one's a little touchy, but I've seen them used effectively in scenario games. In fact, years and years and years ago, uh, it was Operation Irene, I think it was Irene 6, 
or seven. It's been a long time. Uh, I think it's like seven or eight years ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm dating myself, definitely. Uh, uh, my team acted as Shadow Squad or kind of opposing force at Operation Irene. So just kind of like the third group that kind of floats around. It helps balance the game out and uh, things like that. So uh, one of my teammates built a kind of a self-exploding suicide vest kind of thing that blew out powder uh, when he detonated. And it was pretty effective. Uh, unfortunately, it's only good like once or maybe twice if you can fool people because at that point they know who you are and you're gonna get shot on sight. Um, these days, like I said, with all the stuff that's been going on in the news, it could be a touch insensitive. Uh, so you may wanna kinda of weigh that out. If it's in the rules and you're gonna be playing you know, an insurgent force and that's part of it, maybe, but uh, it, it could be interesting doing that, but at the same time could be a little touchy. Just say, here's what I say. Make sure to check with your Milsim organizer or promoter, make sure it's allowed, and make sure you're playing a role that it makes sense. You don't be a soldier and throw that on. You want to kind of be the insurgency and play the part. Pine Size PB writes, do your milkshakes bring all the boys to the yard? Dang right, and mine's better than yours. EDM XD 2015 Haven writes, hey Jonathan, I just wanted to know if it's okay to, or safe to mix up the weight of BB in your magazine. Let's say point to O mixed with 0.25s. You know, honestly, I try not to. I have done that in the past, actually mixed weights of BBs, but if you do it, make sure they are closer in weight. The more, the bigger the difference. Like, so 0 0.20, 0 0.25, that's a half a gram difference. Doesn't sound like, or a hundredth of, five hundredths of a gram difference. Uh, it doesn't sound like much, but that will greatly affect your hop up. So if you have your hop up set, let's say you're gonna set it for the point twos and your BBs are flying straight, the two fives are gonna die off. If you set it for the two fives and they're flying straight, the two O's are gonna take off and then go to the sky and fly away. So it's going to greatly affect your accuracy. I mean, considerably, especially that big of a gap. Two three to two five uh, may not be as bad, or two five to two eight is a little bit. I've done that before. I actually mix some of those together and still use them. Uh, and even two eight to three twos are a little weird. But yeah, they will affect your accuracy. And if you want every shot to count, unless you're just spraying and praying, which I don't recommend in airsoft anyway, just hosing people down. Like semi autos, the, the way to go. I would probably stay away from mixing those BBs if you could. Matt Scott, as well as I don't call hits, both ask pretty much the same question. Do you believe airsoft is dying oh boy grab the popcorn here we go um no but it is withering a bit so let's be really honest here let's let's talk numbers and growth when i got into this hobby a decade and a half ago a long time ago it was super small tiny i go to the local field there was 20 30 players out there maybe 40 right and now 40 was a huge day 20 on 20 was an awesome big day uh and that was a big field bad karma airsoft in nashville tennessee uh, flash forward, and now an average game out there is, in, let's say, 2010, 2012, was 200 players or 170. So you're looking at 100 on 100 or 80 on 80 or something like that. Uh, big, big, big game, showing big numbers. And it's a pretty big field. If you guys know Bad Karma, it's like 36 acres, so they can handle a lot of number of players. Now I'll move till today, and you're looking at maybe... 50 on 50, 70 on 60s on 60s, and maybe even 70 on 70 uh, it are the numbers. So it peaked and it landed. Now, is it dying? Is it going back to where it was when it was this tiny, tiny little hobby that only a few people played? No. Has it found its, I would say, its sweet spot and like the big burst of popularity and it's kind of, well, players have left and we're waiting for the next upturn? I think that's where we are. So right now, Airsoft is a bit on the level, or if you talk to some retailers, even a little bit on the downswing. I think way things are shifting are they're going to indoor fields more than outdoor fields. Uh, Airsoft as a business is maturing, it's growing. You have a lot of people still in this industry, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of distributors, a lot of people bringing stuff in here and there, a lot of retailers, and those retailer numbers have been shrinking. I think the growth was so big, uh, the players, the 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 fields and the stores thought the players were going to keep doing this. In reality, they hit a point where the, the hobby caps, right? There's only so many people who play golf, so many people who play tennis, so many people that play airsoft. So I think there were a lot more stores that needed to be in the market, a lot more guns, a lot more manufacturers and things like that. And now the industry is settling out into the big players. So I don't think it's dying at all. I think 15 years from now, we'll still be talking about airsoft. No problem. But is it on that huge upward swing? No. Is it on a nice steady decline, like a nice steady thing and maybe a slight decline where it levels out and it's gonna be here for a while? I think that's where we're at. So bottom line is don't worry, Airsoft is here to stay and it's not gonna die away.
All right, guys, that's it for the questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from one of my personal favorite YouTubers. I really love this guy. He's an awesome dude on and off the field and actually a personal friend of mine. And it is Robo, Robo Murray, Rob Murray. Uh, it's Robo Airsoft. It's one of his pew pew times, which is kind of his way of doing gameplay. And this one is Operation Nightfall 5. This is kind of his trailer for it. And I'll tell you this, probably one of the best trailers I've seen to get you hooked into watching a Milsim op and event that I have seen in so much time. It was so good. So it's definitely worth a watch. It's just the trailer. I can't wait to see the actual gameplay, which I think by now is out because this video trailer video came out last week. So if you guys haven't subscribed to Robo, you definitely need to go check the, his channel out, watch everything. He does great reviews as well. And of course, as always, you can click the video over here next to me, or I'll have a link in the description below to take you right on over. All right, guys, that's it for episode number 100. Again, I thank you all for the ability for me to actually sit here and talk to you every single Monday for the past 100 Mondays with a few exceptions. So over two years, you guys are incredibly awesome. And again, like I say, I say this like almost every single episode, you guys are so cool down there in the comment section, such a great community down there helping each other out because there's no way I can answer every question, but you guys do such a great job really helping each other out down there and answering each other's questions when I can't get to them all. Um, also, uh, don't forget, I've got that big game coming up at Fox Airsoft on the 9th. So I want to see you guys there. If you're anywhere near Colorado, definitely come out, hang out. And I think they're doing pre-order on the tickets. They're, they're selling out pretty quick. They actually have quite a few people signed up. I think they're like a couple hundred already. This is going to be an insane game. So guys, until the next 100 episodes, I will see you. But until then, go out, play some Airsoft, have some fun. No matter what you do, call every single 100 of your hits.